She received a friend request on Facebook from someone she had never seen before, but there was something about him that she liked, so she accepted. They started messaging each other back and forth, and they clicked. Then she asked him to come over to her home the following day, and this meant that she was inviting a very dangerous man into the home that she shared with her children. or welcome back. I'm Cassie and this is Wicked World. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. Today's case is about a mother who puts her own need for love and companionship above the love for her own children. One of the most despicable things that a mother can do. This is the story of Lola James. Lola James was born on September 30th, 2017, to Sinead James and Daniel Thomas. She was the middle child, having one older sister and one younger sister. Lola was described as a charming, funny, and cheeky child who loved life. She was always smiling and happy, a little ray of sunshine, with a laugh that would fill the room with pure joy. Lola loved playing outside, as well as helping her grandmother in the garden, and eating the strawberries the two of them had grown together. So Lola's parents didn't remain together very long after she was born. In January of 2020, when Lola was two years old, there were reports of DV in the home with Sinead and her partner at the time. A social worker went out to the home in February to make a face-to-face visit after this report had come in. While she was there, she expressed her concerns that Lola may have ADHD. She also expressed concerns for the home's cleanliness or lack thereof. Very soon after this visit, Sinead actually broke things off with this abusive man. But she would soon find herself in another abusive relationship. On February 17th, Sinead met a new man on Facebook. His name was Kyle Bevan, and he was 28 years old at the time. After talking for only a short time, they started a relationship. Like the same day that they met. And just the next day... Sinead invited Kyle to come live with her and her daughters at their home in Haverford West, Pembrokeshire. Yeah, live with them the day after she met this man, believe it or not. Now, Kyle Bevan was not a good man, of course. He had actually even previously threatened his own mother's life. Alison Bever, Kyle's mother, described him as volatile, and he had a long history of drug abuse. She said that he would fly off the handle whenever she would not give him money to spend on drugs. Or when he expected her to steal prescription drugs from the nursing ward that she worked at. She said that during these violent outbursts, he had four or five times threatened her life. So Kyle Bevins is a self-pronounced spice head, which is a synthetic version of marijuana. It is, however, dangerous compared to marijuana, which is relatively harmless. Spice effects can include paranoia, seizures, thoughts of suicide, psychosis, and more. He also liked to abuse amphetamines, Xanax, and Valium. And Sinead would participate in the amphetamine use with him. So Kyle was a guy that you certainly would not trust. And especially after only knowing him for one day. Just taking a look at this man, I can tell you right now that I would not want him in my house. Not even to visit, never mind moving in. Things went bad real quick. There were various Facebook messages sent between Sinead and Kyle, discussing injuries to Lola while she had been in Kyle's care. He one day said to Sinead in a message that Lola fell out of her cot. He said, she was stood in her cot and she dropped to the floor really quick. She bit her lip on the way down. I tried to help, but she kicked off. Another said... Lola needs to get used to me, babe. I'm not the devil. I think the world of that little girl. But Lola got hurt quite a few times within the next few months. Bruises, including bruises to her eyes, a cut to the bridge of her nose, and a bloody nose. But each time, Kyle would have an excuse for it. 
And Sinead, even after seeing what his temper was like, still believed him. One of the times that Sinead witnessed Kyle's excessive anger and violence was when he was under the influence of various drugs, per usual, on May 14th, 2020, and he took a hammer and started smashing up the house. During this rampage, he headbutted Sinead and chipped one of her teeth. Sinead was able to take her three daughters and escape to her friend's house until things had calmed down again. Kyle apologized to Sinead, saying he felt like a monster. He was so sorry, and he promised that he would change. So even after this vicious attack, Sinead believed him and decided to stay with Kyle. And on July 7th, 2020, angry and under the influence of drugs again, Kyle pushed Lola's baby sister's carriage into the road with the little girl in it. But luckily, she was unharmed. And yup, Sinead kept seeing him, even after that. About a week later, on July 16th, Sinead finally started to get suspicious of the injuries that were showing up on Lola as well as one of her other sisters when they were in Kyle's care. The previous day was when Lola had sustained the bruises around her eyes, and Kyle had simply given the explanation of, she fell off the coffee table. So suspicious, Sinead asked Kyle for his date of birth so that she could do a Claire's Law check, but he refused. And a Claire's Law check means that any member of the public can ask the police for a criminal history report on their partner and receive it. So Sinead clearly did not trust him at this point, and he told her no to giving his birth date. How do you even date and live in the same house as a person for five months and not know their birthday is beyond me, but... So the question is, why was he allowed to stay in the house with her children? The same day, July 16th, Sinead went to bed between 7 and 8 p.m., and she left Lola downstairs with Kyle. Yup, the same day that he refused to give his birth date for a Claire's Law check, and the day after she had sustained bruising around her eyes, she left her daughter with Kyle. Good choice. Kyle would later say that he and Lola stayed up late taking pictures with Snapchat filters, and then he put her to bed later that night. But just after midnight, Sinead heard a bang and a scream come from Lola's room. She ran in there to see Lola sitting on Kyle's lap with no visible injuries, she claimed. Kyle said that Lola had just bumped her head, but everything was fine and he would take care of it. So Sinead went back to bed. No further questions. Hours later, around 7.30 a.m., Sinead was woken up by Kyle, who claimed that Lola had fallen down the stairs and he showed Sinead a piece of the little girl's tongue on his finger. Sinead ran into the living room to find Lola laying on the couch, unresponsive, but still breathing. Kyle decided at this time to call his mother, who he had spoken with earlier that day already, and asked her if she could call 911 because he just couldn't do it, and he had already told Sinead that he had. Sinead also placed a call to emergency services around the same time. Here is Allison Bever's emergency call, as well as Sinead's. The patient wake. You know, she's a two-year-old that's falling down the stairs. She's unconscious. They can't wake her up. And okay. then... Okay. Tell me exactly what's happened. Uh, a two-year-old. She's um, got ADHD. She's fallen from top to bottom of the stairs. Um, they can't wake her up. And then she's bit the end of her tongue because they're not sure if she's fitted. But she's floppy. They can't wake her up. You're not with a patient now. I'm not with a patient. They've, okay. they've just rang me because I've got credit on my phone to ring an ambulance now, they said. They can ring credit. They don't need credit to ring an ambulance. Okay. Oh, they, they panicked, I think, so. And when did this happen? Uh, this morning. I don't know the exact time. Um, it must have just happened because they're trying to... What caused the fall? The, the child woke up and she's fallen down the stairs, apparently. So. Is there any serious bleeding? Uh, no, it's just a massive lump on the head. Okay, is the patient awake? She, no, she's not. She's, she's not breathing. awake. She's okay. Breathing, she's, she's only two. 
Okay, tell me exactly what's happened there. Tell my partner, because I was in bed, he was up with me. Okay. <sighs> She's fallen down the stairs, she has. Right, okay. From the top of the stairs to the bottom, and her whole head's all swollen, and she bit the top of her tongue off with something. Okay. <laughs> Okay. How old is she? Two. I don't. I don't. I don't he's actually got the chunk in his hand. Okay. So, just to confirm, is she conscious? Is she conscious? I don't even. Yeah, she's conscious. She's breathing. She's just sleeping. Can okay. you go sit with her, please? So, does she wake up when you respond? When you try and wake her? She like moves when she when I try to wake her, but her eyes are all swollen and all. Okay. I'm really scared. Okay. How far did she fall? From the top of the stairs down to the bottom. Okay. What caused the fall? I had this bloody dog that I had at barge there and she just fell. Okay. Is there any serious bleeding? Kyle, is there any serious bleeding? Is there any serious bleeding? No. Okay. It's just bruising in her head all over their eyes. Okay, so stay on the line and tell you exactly what to do next. Do not move her unless she's in danger and do not splint any injuries. Can I take her name? Yeah, it's Lola James. Don't move it. The paramedics arrived at Sinead's house fast, only five minutes after Kyle's mom had actually made the phone call. When they got there, Kyle not only claimed that he was her stepfather, but he also told them that she had just tripped over the dog and fallen down the stairs. But here's the thing, if she was sleeping, like he had said, and she just got out of her room and fell down the stairs, not sure how it would have happened because she had a baby gate on her door. Unless she knew how to climb over it, but Sinead never said anything about that. The first responders transported Lola to Withy Bush Hospital in Haverford West. Once there, Kyle became aggressive when doctors started asking him about Lola's injuries, you know, like doctors need to do to treat a patient. While there, he threatened a nurse and told her that he would rip up her papers after the nurse told him that they would be shared with other agencies, including social services. More than a hundred scratches and bruises were recorded on Lola's body, and she had extensive damage to both her eyes, with the injuries to her brain comparable to those found in car crash victims. Lola's injuries were highly suspicious and non-accidental. One doctor who actually examined her said that she was the most battered and bruised child that she had ever seen in her long career. As I had said, Kyle was telling doctors, as well as police now, that Lola had just tripped over the dog and fallen down the stairs. And he only felt partially responsible, he said, because he was busy getting her a bowl of cereal at the time. You should feel fully responsible even if that is the real story, because... You're supposed to be watching her. That's your job, if Sinead left her in your care. Lola's injuries were found to be so severe that she was transferred over to the University Hospital, Wales, in Cardiff, around 11.15 a.m. As Lola was taken down to this hospital, Sinead traveled to be with her, and Kyle stayed at home. At 3.15 p.m., Kyle messaged Sinead, asking what she was going to tell police, to make sure that her account was going to be the same as his. Later that day, both Sinead and Kyle were arrested on suspicion of child neglect, and both of them were brought in for questioning. That day and into the next, police crime scene investigators went to the house and found that despite the fact that the property was dirty and untidy, the bathroom appeared to be spotless as though it had been recently cleaned. Officers also recovered a child's wet, vomit, and blood-stained gray snowflake onesie, which was found in the corner of the living room. And for whatever reason, Kyle, who was out on conditional bail, decided he was going to send threatening text messages to Lola's real father, Daniel, saying he was going to beat him. A few days later, on July 21st, 2020, at 1.18 p.m., Lola passed away. She had succumbed to her terrible injuries. She was two years and ten months old. Both Sinead and Kyle were out on bail until April of 2022. 
On that day, they were both rearrested and charged with murder and causing or allowing the death of a child. Following their arrests, they both appeared a few days later in Swansea Crown Court. They both pled not guilty to the charges against them, and Kyle remained in custody while Sinead again got out on conditional bail. Their trial would not begin until March of 2023, and during this trial, the judge would say, The assault was sustained, deliberate, and violent, and included the use of weapons. But Kyle Bevan still claimed he was innocent, but had no evidence to prove that he was. The jury were also shown photographs that Kyle had taken on his phone that showed marks on Lola's back, as well as extensive swelling and bruising to her head, eyes, and lips. It was discovered that sometime in the night, Kyle had hit Lola so hard in the side of the head that it had caused brain bleeding as well as bleeding of her ear. He also had shaken her back and forth with such force that he caused brain damage. And it came forward in court as well that instead of immediately calling an ambulance to try to save the toddler's life, instead, Kyle had tried to cover his tracks. He had searched the internet for information about head injuries before taking pictures of her limp body and calling his mom. At 4.26 in the morning on July 17th, the day that Lola had been taken to the hospital, Kyle had taken pictures of the injuries on her back, and at this time, she was still conscious and standing. Then at 6.37 a.m., he had taken a screenshot of a website providing him with clear guidance that he should seek emergency medical help if a child displays symptoms such as excessive bruising or swelling and or a loss of consciousness. At 6.40 a.m., Kyle rang his mother, but she didn't answer. He claims that he called her because she's a nurse. But Kyle's mother is, in fact, a non-medically trained healthcare support worker. He continued to try to contact his mother and even sent her pictures of Lola. When she finally received them, she urged Kyle to take the little girl to the hospital immediately. Kyle had also sent a disturbing video to his mother. It showed him picking up Lola's limp body and trying to get her to stand on her feet before letting her go, and she fell to the ground. He then says to the camera, she's gone, she's gone. His mother never watched the video and still never has. Kyle would later show some of these photos to different people and act like he was proud of it. In the morning that Lola had gone to the hospital, When police came around 11 a.m., at first, Kyle tried to not even let them inside the house. And when they finally did get inside, he was in the middle of vacuuming like he was trying to get rid of as much forensic evidence as possible. The prosecution said that the spotless bathroom, along with the bloodied pajamas that they found, were clear proof that Kyle was trying to cover his tracks. Lola's duvet was also found to have a big brown stain on it and a crusty yellow stain believed to be vomit as well as urine. Sinead had initially said that Kyle had never acted violent towards her or her children apart from one occasion where he bruised her arm after grabbing it while attempting to take her phone during an argument. But this story soon changed while in court and Sinead spoke about how Kyle had chipped her tooth along with all the times that he had violently lashed out at her, physically and verbally. Sinead had actually been warned just eight days prior to Lola's attack about how dangerous Kyle could be. Kyle's ex-partner's mother had actually messaged Sinead on Facebook and told her that Kyle was a risk to children. And she said that she was in fear for Sinead's children being around him. Sinead's defender said that she was in fear of Kyle's reaction if she had gone to the police since she had been a victim of DV a few times before. When Sinead was asked what steps she had taken to protect her daughter, she said that she never thought that she was in any real danger. She maintained that her daughter had been safe with her. Clearly. There were many other witnesses who gave testimony about Kyle's volatile and violent behavior in the past. Even throughout all this, Kyle remained expressionless and emotionless. Lola's mother, Sinead, 
was tearful throughout, however. The judge said that he was sure that Kyle was responsible for multiple assaults on Lola before her tragic murder. He also stated, Lola should have been safe in her own home and surrounded by people that she could trust. But instead, her mother, Sinead James, allowed a violent and destructive man into their lives and failed in her duty to protect Lola from harm. Sinead was well aware that Kyle was a danger, but she willingly chose to keep him in her life. On April 4th, 2023, after 10 hours of deliberating, the jury returned with their verdict, and they found Kyle Bevan to be guilty of murder, and Sinead James to be guilty of causing or allowing Lola's death. Both Lola's grandmother, as well as her biological father, gave heartbreaking victim impact statements before sentencing. Lola's grandmother commanded Kyle look at her before she start reading hers. She said, Kyle, you took the young innocent life of my granddaughter. At the same time, you have taken so much more than you can imagine. You killed my Lola and you have broken her family. I hope the time you have now, you can understand what you have done. As a parent, all I could hope for was that Lola would continue to grow with happiness and health and with the courage in her heart to know she could be anything and do anything she wanted, but that will never be. Lola didn't just die, wasn't just taken from me in the worst possible way. She was brutally attacked. Her tiny body was savaged in the evilest way. She didn't stand a chance. Lola's little life was filled with filth and chaos at the hands of her mother, who couldn't even provide her with basic safety in her own home. The guilt I feel lives inside me and will never leave as the memory of Lola lying in a hospital bed, fighting to stay alive, will remain with me always. All I have been left with is guilt, heartache, pain, and torment. Lola's grandmother had been due to babysit the night of the violent attack, but she had felt unwell. For this reason, she partially blames herself for what happened to little Lola. Stand up, Carl Bevan. For the murder of Lola James, I sentence you to imprisonment for life with a minimum term of 28 years, less 368 days already spent in custody on remand. You may go down. Stand up, Sinead James. For allowing the death of Lola James, I sentence you to six years imprisonment. You will serve half, namely three years, before release on license. You may go down. Lola James's funeral was held on September 15, 2020 in St. David and St. Patrick's Church in Haverford West. Lola then traveled through Milford Haven in a horse and carriage to Thornton Cemetery. Her family asked people to clap, cheer, or let off a balloon to help celebrate the little girl's life. Well, thank you for listening to all of Lola's story today. It's terrible to think that her mother could have saved her so many times, but didn't. She kept just pushing her intuition to the side and letting this evil, awful man stay in her house. And I can't even imagine what he did to poor little Lola that night. So, if you do like true crime, and you want to hear it from me, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. And, turn on your notifications too, so you'll know when I post a new video, which is two to three times every week. Thanks for watching A Wicked World today. Until next time, take care guys. Bye. Thank you for being patrons of A Wicked World. Adina, Amy, Angela, Angie, Kara, Lindsay, Mel, and Neoma. You guys rock. Now, there's even more of a wicked world on Patreon. You'll have access to exclusive videos each month and more. Any support truly helps to make sure the victims never get forgotten and to highlight the shortcomings of society associated with each case. So check it out at patreon.com slash a wicked world or use the Patreon app.